A few weeks back, a terrible sounding Dana White sat down with Rob Fox and was asked who might succeed him when he finally hangs up the all black suit and retires from his role as UFC president, something he's been doing now for over 20 years. His answer fascinated me to say the least. There is a guy, there's one guy. There's certain things that I do that he wouldn't be able to do, but the important things, this guy could absolutely positively do it. it Are you not be, revealing who the guy is? Nobody would even know who the fuck he is. Oh. A yeah. behind the scenes guy. Interesting indeed. Ever since I saw that clip, I thought, who is this behind the scenes guy that it very much sounds like Dana already has lined up to take the throne once he steps down? I mean, that's a big deal. Dana is, in many ways, the UFC. He is the face of the company. It's almost impossible to imagine the UFC where he's not in charge. So for him to be so sure about the next guy, and for him to not even bother naming him, really got me curious. So I started doing some research. And while I can't say 100% that I know who Dana is talking about, I'm 99% certain I'm right, and I think you're going to want to know a lot more about what this guy is doing now and what this all might mean in the future. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and this is who Dana White is priming to be his successor. Before we get into who I think it is, let's talk about who it's not because people throw names around a lot, and some of them based on what Dana said, we can eliminate immediately. Daniel Cormier? Not the guy. In fact, that's who was mentioned by name in that interview as someone that people had considered, and Dana shot it down. Seeing as this mystery person is not someone that people know as White explained, we can also go ahead and eliminate other popular speculative candidates like Chael Sonnen, Forrest Griffin, and matchmakers Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard. They're all well known to the MMA audience. Sean and Mick sometimes do stare downs at the weigh-ins, they're some of the only UFC executives that fans can name outright, so I'm confident that they're off the board. Then who else could it be? Let's get a bit deeper into the woods here. Let's talk about some quote behind the scenes guys. People with the experience and knowledge that could potentially get the job done once White's done. How about Craig Brassari, the longtime UFC executive vice president of operations and production? He's been with the UFC for nearly 20 years now and oversees every aspect of the broadcasts. He's worked with Dana every single day since nearly the beginning. If anybody Everybody knows how to run a fight card on Saturday night in the thick of it, it's him. The reason I don't think it is though is because when you look at the jobs that Dana has, production isn't exactly high on the list. In fact, I'm not sure how much of that he does at all. He's more focused on fighter relations, matchmaking, contracts, dealing with the commissions, promoting the show. There's a lot more to what White does, and so I don't think Borsari is who he was talking about. What about Chief Operating Officer Ike Epstein? He's been working with the UFC in various capacities since the Fertitas purchased the promotion, and in 2006 became General Counsel dealing with all sorts of legal issues from fighter contracts to getting MMA regulated across the US. He too has been right there alongside Dana for decades and has dealt with the ins and outs of the business side of things, especially as it pertains to any legal matters. He's definitely a strong candidate for who it is that Dana might have been speaking on, but there's one area that Epstein isn't involved that to me immediately eliminates him, at least as far as I could find, and that was the actual fight making, the choosing of bouts, the putting together of cards. That is a major aspect of White's job, and it doesn't appear that Epstein is a large part of that process. Sure, he knows everything about how to run the business of the UFC, but could he serve in the role of truly making the promotion what it is? The creative engine that has in large part made the UFC so popular? I don't think so. There is one guy though, this one executive who kept on popping up as I did my research to find out who might be the replacement that Dana was alluding to in that interview. He fits the profile perfectly. Behind the scenes guy, deals with a lot of important things as White put it, and not exactly well known, at least to the audience that is consuming an interview with Dana White on Barstool Sports. I think the mystery man that Dana is preparing to be his successor is Chief Business Officer Hunter Campbell. So who the hell is this guy? He certainly doesn't look like he'd be the replacement for Dana White. I mean, can you picture him screaming Conor McGregor with a tomato red face at the top of his lungs while Floyd Mayweather throws money in the air? To be fair, White did say that not every aspect of his job is something that this successor is necessarily equipped for. But then again, maybe he'll just have a different style than White when it comes to that face of the company role. Based on everything I've seen of him, he appears to be a pretty mellow guy, but maybe he's a total lunatic like White, who knows? What's important though is that in pretty much every other regard, this guy can and is doing what Dana does every single day. In fact, I bet a lot of the things that you think White is doing as UFC president right now, it's actually being done by Hunter Campbell, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about who this guy is and how he got here. Campbell is a Vegas kid born and bred, and while you grew up wanting to be a sports star, his childhood dream was to own a casino. Hunter's dad Dad Donald is some kind of super lawyer and a big deal in Nevada, the Campbell in the law firm Campbell and Williams. Here he is telling a billionaire to go fuck himself in the most lawyer way possible. And here's a news flash, I'm not a busboy, and I don't work for you. 
I work for them. After getting a law degree, Hunter would go on to work for his dad for about five years doing lawyery stuff until he got a job as general counsel for the UFC in 2017. In 2019, his role was upgraded to chief business officer, and he's been working with Big D every single day in that capacity ever since. So what exactly is it that makes me think Hunter is the guy Dana is referring to? Well, the first thing that really got me thinking that it was him was a series of tweets from Ariel Helwani dating back to when the UFC announced that interim title fight between Cyril Ghosn and Derek Lewis at UFC 265. Ariel wrote, Regarding today's interim news, you'd be shocked at how often they threaten this and how often they threaten to strip. And while most of the criticism has been directed towards Dana White, he is the face after all, it's really the MO of Hunter Campbell since he took over. For those that don't know, Campbell is the UFC's chief business officer. He took over shortly after the sale. He does most, if not all, the deals these days. Some love him. He's a lot more like Lorenzo in that he isn't emotional, but he also threatens to strip constantly. Campbell is the lawyer White often refers to. Hardly ever mentions him by name not sure why. He's way more valuable to the UFC than just being a lawyer. In fact, I'd argue he's the third most important person in the company behind Ari and White. Again, he does all the big deals. Think of him as the UFC's general manager if they were a sports team. Well, holy shit. Campbell is the secret third in command? He's the Grand Moff Tarkin to Dana White's Darth Vader and Ari's Emperor Palpatine? He does most of the deals these days? And Ariel even pointed out that White doesn't like to mention him by name, just like the interview at the beginning of the video. Video. So that got me wondering if there were other times that Dana has spoken about him that I could pull from. And oh, did I get something that is damn compelling. In an interview White did with Arden Zwelling in 2018, the UFC president had this to say about that room you've probably seen a thousand times now, the one that's full of fighters' names on a whiteboard that Dana uses to hype up cards on social media. He said, quote, We sit in that room for fucking hours, staring at the walls and making fights. We hit some roadblocks, but my job is to push these guys to figure things out. Everything I've ever done has been done in that room. It's the think tank. That room is the key to everything. And do you know who it is that Dana told the interviewer sits in that room with him for quote fucking hours? Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard, Hunter Campbell, and me. The place that White says is the most important to his entire role as UFC president, where all the important shit gets done regarding matchmaking, the UFC schedule, fighter contracts, all that stuff. And who is it that's right by his side in there every day? Two guys we've already eliminated as his prospective heir and Campbell. I mean, come on. Another area in which White has been quick to compliment Campbell and thus reveal more about his importance is in relation to the pandemic. Hunter Campbell, who works for me, who has been fucking killing himself. I thought this dude was gonna fucking die. Dana told Yahoo Sports that it was Hunter who got UFC 249 in Jacksonville put together after the promotion was shut down and missed five cards. If you've watched the Fight Island Declassified documentary that ESPN did, Campbell was crucial to getting Fight Island secured and setting up the series of cards there. When Gilbert Burns got COVID and had to drop out of the main event of UFC 251, Fight Island's first card, it was Hunter who broke the news to him. It was Hunter who set up the replacement bout with Masvidal. Dana just gave final approval. He was even doing things like informing Paul Felder he had to quarantine because he'd been exposed to COVID by being around Dean Thomas. Remember when UFC 232 had to get moved to California at the last second because of John Jones's pulsing picograms? Look who's in the room breaking the situation down to Alexander Gustafson. I'm not sure exactly what it is Dana even has to do when this guy is around. He seemingly does everything. Something that's starting to happen more and more as well is fighters naming Hunter on social media. The other day, when Nate Diaz requested his release, he at mentioned Hunter, who is hilariously not Hunter Campbell. I feel terrible for whoever the hell has that account. Here's John Jones mentioning Campbell by name talking about his heavyweight negotiations recently. Another one asking him to release text messages, as if JBJ has been dealing with him directly, not Dana White. And that would appear to be the case as when White talked about John's demands, he mentioned several times, quote, I'll quote him uh, and, and what he had said to my lawyer. He wants what Deontay Wilder was paid. Francis Ngannou name-dropped him in a tweet in late 2019. Kevin Ioli tweeted a memo about COVID-19 testing protocols that was sent out to all athletes, corners, and managers. It's written by Hunter. If you know where to look, he's everywhere. Or maybe I'm just going insane now from doing all this research. I'm starting to feel like Charlie from Always Sunny. This name keeps coming up over and over again every day. Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia. I look at the mail. Well, this whole box is Pepe Sylvia! When the UFC announced changes to the USADA doping policies in their official press release, two people are quoted, Jeff Nowitzki and 
and you guessed it, Pepe Sylvia. Remember when the UFC randomly released Yoel Romero? His manager, Malki Kawa, in their official statement, said, we are grateful for the opportunities that Dana White and Hunter Campbell gave us over the years. An LA Times article about UFC 225's buy rate mentions Hunter refuting some of the more exaggeratedly low estimates that have been going around. Here's the man himself during that secretly recorded phone call from Crazy Joshua Fabia talking about his own importance. Between Dana, Sean, me, the, the people here that really matter and move things and, you know, control the fight business aspect of this. So let's recap a little bit here. This guy's doing all the fighter contract negotiations, even major stars. He's an integral part of Dana's matchmaking team, event scheduling, and talent acquisition. He saved the UFC during the pandemic. He's handling all sorts of legal matters. He's putting out COVID memos. He's talking about USADA protocols in press releases. He's refuting pay-per-view buy rate numbers to the media. By his own secretly recorded words, he in part controls the fight business and is one of the people who really matter. Honestly, besides eating flaming hot Cheeto egg rolls on Fuck It Friday, what the hell is Dana White doing if this guy isn't? I kid, of course, but it's very clear that Hunter Campbell is a foundationally important member of the UFC machine. And if there is anybody who it would appear is in line to be the next Dana White, it is absolutely him. And if it's not him, it certainly sounds like it should be because he is at current involved in nearly every aspect of the business that makes the UFC what it is. Besides, of course, the promoting, the being the over-the-top public face to the promotion, which is perhaps the secret ingredient. Maybe that's why it all works. I mean, Dana White is a cartoon character, and that's coming from a cartoon character, but you can't deny the success of his methods. It's super effective. Will Campbell be able to do the same thing? I don't know. He's a shadowy figure. He doesn't have social media. He doesn't put himself out there on podcasts and in scrums. One of his favorite quotes, according to a profile UNLV did on him, is from Churchill. We are masters of the unsaid words, but slaves of those we let slip out. In other words, he doesn't like putting his foot in his mouth. An easy thing to do when you're in the public eye. For now, it would appear that Hunter is more comfortable as the man behind the curtain, learning the craft in silence, being the unseen hand that's moving all the pieces. When it's closer to his time, maybe he'll step out more. After all, Dana's only 52. For all we know, he'll be doing this job for another two decades. So where this all ends up is anybody's guess. But as far as who White was alluding to as his chosen successor in that interview, there aren't any stronger arguments to be made for anybody but Hunter Campbell. And I would be willing to wager that his role in the UFC is only going to expand with time. I'm Bailey from Emerald Point, and yes, we are finally here in our brand new office. Let's go check it out. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to our MMA Challenge of the Week. Today, I'm joined by the greatest referee in the world, Mr. Mark Goddard. Would, I would punch him straight in the back of the fucking head. That's right, a brand new channel with brand new content. Welcome to Fight Front, the home of personality-driven MMA. Today, it's an MMA challenge where I take the worst rated UFC character in UFC Undisputed 3 all the way to the heavyweight championship of the world. And hey, it's me, Tommy Toehold, and I'm rolling around on a damn monitor. And I'm reacting to Colin McGregor. Make sure you scroll on down and hit subscribe because you do not want to miss all the new content coming your way on this brand new channel. Huge shout out to Max Randall for editing this video together. Follow him on Twitter at Max underscore Randall. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. We've got three new videos or more for you every single week. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Follow On Point MMA on Twitter and have yourself a wonderful day.